So a spinal fusion is what it says. It's stopping movement within the spine. So if you've got back or neck pain that isn't getting any better, uh, we go through a whole series of things. So we do our special investigations, we come up with a diagnosis, and we have your working treatment plan. So most patients will have painkillers and physical therapy, and that gets 90% of people better. When it doesn't, and your life is being severely affected, we use other instruments. For example, we use a thing called the Oswestry Disability Index. And what that is, is a series of 10 questions where you score up to five. Um, and then we can work out what the impact of that disease is. And if you then not got better with injections, we then talk to you about the surgery, which is a form of fusion. So if you've got one, the way to think about it is if you've got one or two segments that are moving and causing you pain, the way to stop the pain is to stop them moving, hence the fusion. Um, it may be um, that it doesn't get rid of all of your pain, but gets rid of a lot of pain. And the reason is, is because remember, remember all of your discs are the same age. Um, so if one starts to degenerate, the others are also showing signs of wearing and tearing. Um, but we're aiming at a target section, section or a segment or a motion segment. And a fusion will stop that mo movement. What you can do is you can either approach it all from the back, you can approach it from the back and the side, you can approach it from the front, or you can approach it from the back and the front, which we call a 360 degree fusion. So just taking each one in turn, the posterior one is a posterior lateral instrumented fusion. That's the most common one that we do. We put screws into the segment that is moving and causing you pain. We then approach the disc from the back and put a cage. And a cage is just simply a metal block. It's a building block that we fill with bone graft and that stops the movement and over time you fuse. And the things that help you fuse are going to be things like um, uh, vitamin D in your diet, uh, having a healthy bone mass uh, index or um, your, your bone mineralization. So you, osteoporosis and osteopenia can be a problem. But what we're aiming to do is to stop that segment moving, which will stop your pain. OK, another type of fusion is a lateral fusion. And this is a minimally invasive way of getting into the spine we go from the side, uh, we actually open up the muscle layers, get to the side of the spine, take the damaged disc out and put one of these building blocks or a fusion cage in there with some bone graft. So that's a lateral fusion. Then there's an anterior, uh, an then there's an anterior lumbar body fusion. And what you do is you go from the front to do that. Now you can do an anterior cervical discectomy fusion for neck pain, and you can do an anterior lumbar body fusion for back pain. That involves going through the abdomen, moving all of the body contents to the side, getting to the disc, and then taking the disc out and putting one of these building blocks that's full of bone graft in place. Finally, you get a 360 degree fusion where you go from the front, fuse it from the front, and then you go from the back and put the screws at the back. And that gives something that is very, very secure over one or two segments or even more segments. So that's what a fusion aims to do. It aims to stop movement. The risks of that surgery depend upon the approach that you use. We're moving nerves around, so you have a risk of nerve damage, um, which can lead to weakness or lost sensation. Um, you can damage blood vessels, so you can have bleeding. And because you're cutting through skin, you can have infection, which is obviously a, to prevent that. What we use is antibiotics during the operation. Each operation, each approach has its own potential risks. And although we will go through them or your doctor will go through the risks of that particular fusion, there are other resources that you really should use. So the British Association of Spine Surgeons, they're on their website, they have a patient portal which will take you through the risks. There's Spine Universe, which will take you through the risks. And there's the North American Spine Society, which also has a website, which will go through the risks of particular surgery. Before you go for spinal surgery, you must be aware of the risks. You must be aware that the complication rate is exceedingly is small. So the overall risk to you is small. And if your pain is bad enough, because we use all of these instruments like the Osteo Disability Index, CU, we do special investigations. So if spinal surgery in the form of a fusion is the thing that we need to go for, we'll have taken all of the things to minimize the risks to you so that you get a good result. So one of the things that we used to do, uh, and I'm, I'm saying used to do, some people still do it, uh, some surgeons operate in a silo, and a silo is a bad thing to operate in because the spine is complicated, patients are complicated, the treatment options are complicated. So what you need to know is you need to know that you've got a team around you. So the people that we have in our team 
are we have the support staff. We have secretaries, we have EAs, we have some great people who look after the back office stuff. We have great nurses, we have great technical support. And then within the team of people that deliver treatment, we've got physiotherapists, chiropractors, osteopaths, acupuncturists, psychologists, psychotherapists, uh, spinal kineticists. We've got rheumatologists that deal with bone disease and with our inflammatory arthropathy. Uh, we have groups of spinal surgeons and we talk about individual cases for our multidisciplinary yeah. team meeting. And all of those are key people to giving you the best care that you can possibly get.